It's um, problem 20 here, and um, the given integral is cosecant x times secant x dx. Um, so first we're going to get away from the uh, more obscure uh, trig functions and get into the more familiar. So cosecant we're going to turn into 1 over sine and secant 1 over cosine. So we can write uh, just 1 divided by, and then it will be like um, sine x times cosine x in the denominator, right? And then, of course, dx and move forward from here, right? Okay, cool. Now, every time we see sine x times cosine x, we think of the double angle identity for uh, sine, which is that sine 2x is equal to 2 sine x times cosine x, right? The only thing is that, like, this here does not have a 2 multiplying it, right? But that's an easy fix. We can write a 2 right here and then uh, go, like, okay, so we have 2 times um, dx and then divided by and now we can introduce the desired 2 in the denominator and write 2 sine x um, cosine x, right? Okay, cool. Uh, and so this is sine 2x. But where to from there, right? Like we write 2 times dx divided by sine 2x. And then where to from there? Not so clear. So while this is a cool uh, and interesting thought, we're going to uh, come back and try a slightly different approach. I'm not saying that we're all the way stuck with the sine 2x idea, but I think that this next idea is better, which is that we multiply here by cos x. Uh, sorry, I wanted a different color. Um, so we multiply here by cos x. And of course, then we have to multiply in the denominator also by cos x. That way we are multiplying by 1, but that you know. Now look at what happens. We get cosine squared x right there, cos x times cos x in the denominator, right? And that's got to be convenient. One approach is that, you know, once we have cosine squared in the denominator, we can turn it into 1 minus sine squared. Um, while that's a cool approach, um, I'll show you a different approach that's even more efficient, which is that, like, we can say, hey, uh, the numerator is now, after multiplying by this, the numerator is now cos x dx, and then the denominator is now... Uh, the denominator is now, well, let me like write that slightly differently, cos x and then a little bit of room dx. You'll see why the room in a second. But yeah, like they're being multiplied still, cos x and dx. Okay, cool. And then the denominator, we have sine x, right? And then times cosine squared x. And the reason why I wanted this space here is so that I could write a 1 right there. So I have cos x times 1 times dx. And now look at what we've got. And cos x divided by sine x, right? Right here, we've got cot x, cot x, cotangent x. And then in the 1 divided by cosine squared, we've got secant squared. And that we like a lot. And here's why. Uh, because, like I said, we write this as cot x, right? Cotangent x. And then what we have remaining will be secant squared x dx. And again, the secant squared because of the 1 divided by cosine squared. Well, the reason we like this a lot is because we know secant squared is the derivative of tangent. And we can get a tangent out of the cotangent by writing 1 over tangent in place of cotangent. So this is what I'm saying. Our integral can now be written as 1 divided by um, tan x, uh, 1 divided by tan x, and then times secant squared x dx. And we can write this even more succinctly as uh, secant squared x divided by um, tan x dx, right? And here it's pretty obvious what we're going to do. We're going to say that u, um, again, different color, geez. So u is equal to tan x, right? Wherein it's pretty clear that du will equal secant squared x dx. So what we're saying is this right there is exactly du and that's u. So our integral can turn into integral of du divided by u. And that is going to say du divided by u. And that is going to say the natural log of u um, plus c. But wait, what is u? u is tan x, so our final answer is the natural log of um, tan x uh, plus c. Yeah? Okay, cool. This is it. 
and yeah uh, this is the last problem but yeah watch my other videos lots of interesting math to be had all right uh, take care